this is the second part of lecture 2 and if you recall we began the study of cellular organelles with lecture 2 and in this part we shall study the mitochondrion which in plural form is called mitochondria we shall discuss various aspects of the mitochondria namely their structure major functions as well as the major metabolic pathways that occur in the mitochondria let's begin with a general overview so mitochondria are called the powerhouses of the cell and that's a very apt title because mitochondria provide energy to the cell by generating atp thus the mitochondria are essential for vital cellular processes because without energy all of the cells functions would cease and the cells would die they show great variability in number per cell size and shape on average mitochondria are around 0.5 to 1 micrometer in cross sectional diameter and around 3 micrometers in length but their length can extend up to 10 micrometer and their shape may be spherical over or filamentous or rod shaped now we'll discuss the number of mitochondria in cells on average human cells have around 2000 mitochondria that make up one fifth of their volume per cell but the range is very large for example some cells like human rbcs have no mitochondria while others may have thousands of them for instance liver cells have around 2000 mitochondria per cell and cardiac muscle cells may have over 5000 mitochondria per cell and the number of mitochondria per cell depends on how active the cells are highly active cells have greater energy requirements and more mitochondria so that more atp can be produced to meet the cells high energy demands and within cells too there is a higher concentration of mitochondria in regions where energy requirements are greater for example around the contractile myofibrils in cardiac muscle cells and also at synapses and axon terminals in neurons mitochondria are unique among cell organelles because they have their own dna which is called mitochondrial dna empty dna for short no other organelle besides the nucleus and mitochondria contain genetic material in human cells mitochondrial dna codes for 13 polypeptides besides some other biomolecules namely transfer rnas and ribosomal rnas and all of these 13 polypeptides are part of the electron transport chain etc for short so the etc as is an essential component of cellular respiration and we shall study it later in detail now we will discuss the mitochondria's ability to undergo fission as well as fusion the main purpose of mitochondrial fission is self replication fission is needed for mitochondrial replication because unlike other organelles new mitochondria cannot be built from scratch in daughter cells so instead of that they arise from pre existing mitochondria mitochondrial fission also allows old and damaged mitochondria to be removed via autophagy and replaced by new undamaged mitochondria fission also increases the mitochondrial count of the cell when the cell's energy needs increase mitochondria also undergo fusion the fusion of mitochondria also contributes to mitochondrial health by allowing mixing and exchange of components between different mitochondria this way damaged mitochondria can complement each other and healthy mitochondria can compensate for the ones which are damaged now we shall study mitochondrial structure in detail besides the nucleus the mitochondrion is the only organelle to be covered by a double membrane it has an inner and an outer membrane while the outer membrane is smooth the inner membrane has in foldings called cristae that increase its surface area 
So there is a space between the inner and outer membranes, which is called the intermembrane space. And the innermost compartment of the mitochondria, which is called the mitosol or the mitochondrial matrix, is a gel-like substance and it is enclosed by the inner mitochondrial membrane. So here is an enlarged view of the mitochondrion, which will help us to visualize its structure in detail. Here we have the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the intermembrane space which lies between the two membranes, the invaginations of the inner membrane which are called criste, and the mitochondrial matrix. Let's discuss the outer membrane now. So it is rich in lipids and it is composed of phospholipids and cholesterol. And the outer membrane has transmembrane protein channels called porins which allow relatively free passage of smaller molecules through the outer membrane. Thus the outer membrane is highly permeable to smaller molecules. This membrane also contains certain enzymes, namely enzymes for fatty acid elongation besides some other enzymes. For those who are curious, these other enzymes include those that carry out oxidation of epinephrine and degradation of tryptophan. Now we come to, come to the inner membrane. In contrast to the lipid rich outer membrane, the inner mitochondrial membrane is rich in proteins having a protein to lipid ratio of 3 is to 1. Also, the inner membrane lacks porins that are seen in the outer membrane. Thus, it is not freely permeable. Instead, the inner membrane has transport proteins of a different type that regulate the movement of molecules across the inner membrane into and out of the mitochondrial matrix thus making the inner membrane selectively permeable. Other important structures found in the inner membrane are ATP synthase which generates ATP and the components of the electron transport chain and also mitochondrial fission and fusion proteins. The inner membrane is also rich in a unique phospholipid called cardiolipin. Cardiolipin is almost exclusively found in the inner mitochondrial membrane and it is important for the proper functioning of the electron transport chain and it also plays a role in hormone signaling, signaling and programmed cell death or apoptosis. Additionally, unlike the outer membrane which is smooth, the inner membrane has invaginations called cristae. These infoldings or invaginations serve to greatly increase the surface area of the inner membrane. And this increased surface area allows a greater number of the protein complexes involved in ATP synthesis, namely ATP synthase and electron transport chain components to be embedded in the inner membrane, which leads to increased ATP production. In fact, it has been observed that cells with greater energy requirements have a greater number of cristae in their mitochondria. Moving on to the mitochondrial matrix. It is the innermost compartment of the mitochondria and it is enclosed by the inner mitochondrial membrane. It contains mitochondrial DNA, ribosomes and RNA. Thus, the mitochondria have their own protein synthesis machinery. The matrix also contains numerous enzymes that facilitate the metabolic pathways and reactions that occur in the mitosol. Now we shall have a look at some of the metabolic pathways and reactions that take place in the mitochondrial matrix. We have oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate and the beta oxy oxidation of fatty acids, both of which generate acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is of course one of the substrates of the Krebs cycle. 
Then we have the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle, which is among the most important metabolic pathways studied in biochemistry. It generates NADH and FADH2, which donate electrons to the electron transport chain and set off the redox reactions of oxidative phosphorylation. Next, we have amino acid catabolism, which generates molecules like oxaloacetate that act as intermediate molecules in Krebs cycle. Some parts of the, uh, of the synthesis of heme and urea take place in the mitochondrial matrix. And the initial step of gluconeogenesis also occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Please note that oxidative phosphorylation, which is the final part of cellular respiration and which includes the electron transport chain and the generation of ATP by ATP synthase, does not occur in the mitochondrial matrix. Instead, it happens in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now let's look at the structures in the outer membrane. Embedded within the membrane are enzymes for lipid metabolism and also the transmembrane channels called porins that are freely permeable to small molecules. Coming to the inner membrane, we have ATP synthase, the components of the electron transport chain and the selectively permeable transport channels of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And lastly, we have the mitochondrial matrix enzymes, such as the enzymes that take part in Krebs cycle and beta oxidation of fatty acids. Let's have a look at the most important mitochondrial functions. The primary function of mitochondria is, of course, ATP generation. The complete oxidation of one glucose molecule yields around 34 or 38 ATP molecules. As discussed previously, mitochondria are involved in the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and amino acids, as well as the biosynthesis of heme and urea. Other than that, mitochondria are also involved in the synthesis of ketone bodies during prolonged periods of fasting or starvation when these ketone bodies are used as alternative energy sources instead of carbohydrates. The detoxic detoxification of ammonia occurs in the mitochondria of liver cells. Mitochondria are also involved in hormone signaling, signaling and apoptosis. There is an interesting theory about the origin and evolution of mitochondria. We shall discuss it very briefly here. So it has been observed that mitochondria closely resemble prokaryotic cells, leading some to believe that mitochondria may have evolved from aerobic bacteria. So the theory is that aerobic bacteria established a symbiotic relationship with primordial anaerobic eukaryotic cells and assimilated with them, which led to the emergence of true eukaryotic cells as we know them today. Now for the clinical correlation, there are some diseases which are specifically caused by mutations in mitochondrial DNA and which have maternal inheritance because the zygote at the time of fertilization gets its mitochondria from the ovum and not the sperm. Some examples of these diseases are kerns syndrome which has a characteristic triad of progressive external ophthalmoplegia, pigmentary retinopathy, and onset before age 20, myoclonic epilepsy, and labor's hereditary optic neuropathy. Then there are some diseases which may be caused by either mitochondrial DNA mutations or other types of mitochondrial defects. These include diabetes mellitus and degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So to sum up, in this lecture we have discussed mitochondrial structure, 
mitochondrial functions some of the important important metabolic pathways that occur in the mitochondria an evolutionary hypothesis about the origin of mitochondria and diseases caused by mitochondrial defects so that concludes this lecture and thank you for listening and if you have any questions about today's lecture or any other topic in clinical biochemistry you can post your questions in the comment section of this video or you can contact me by email or dm me on my instagram handle or message me on x or twitter here's my contact info and you can pause the video and note it down i hope you have noted down my info thank you and stay tuned for the next video lecture